At Christmas, people who are naughty get coal in their stockings. And if the White House and Congress don't make a deal in the next nine days to avoid the fiscal cliff, we ring in the new year with big tax increases and spending cuts. Here to talk about what's going to happen are two leading senators, John Barrasso, chairman of the Republican Policy Committee. And from New York, Democrat Kent Conrad, chairman of the Senate Budget Committee. Senators, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thanks for having me. Good uh, to be before with you. heading to Hawaii for Christmas, the president laid out a new stripped down <clears throat> plan to avert the fiscal cliff. Here is what it is. Extend the Bush tax cuts for people making less than $250,000. Extend unemployment benefits for the 2 million people who will run out next month. And delay the, the, delay the sequester of $110 billion in spending cuts next year. For all the talk of $4 trillion in debt reduction, this plan would only save $800 billion over 10 years. Senator Conrad, is that the best that Washington can do over the next nine days? And can you pass even that? Uh, look, Chris, it may come to that, but we can do better, and we should do better. This is an opportunity to do something that would be hugely important for the country. Man, my own belief is what we ought to do is take uh, Speaker Boehner's last offer, the President's last offer, split the difference. That would be a package of about $2.6 trillion. You couple that with the $1.1 trillion that's already been done, that would be close to the $4 trillion we're needed to stabilize the debt and to begin to bring it down. And then if you wanted to add on the alternative minimum tax, which costs about $800 billion to fix, you could offset that with overseas contingency operations, war costs. Some people say, well, neither of those uh, are real. Both of them are a fiction. In some sense, that is true. But at least you're offsetting a spending fiction with a revenue fiction and clearing the deck so that we don't increase uh, from 4 million to 31 million people the number affected by the alternative minimum tax. So, so let, me, let me just ask you, Senator, briefly, debt. what what would that mean? What would the level be for, for uh, taxes for revenue? How much would be raised in revenue? Uh, and what would it mean in new spending cuts? The spending cuts would be a trillion four hundred and fifty billion dollars. Uh, the revenue would be a trillion one hundred and fifty billion dollars. So you see there, that's a combination of $2.6 trillion. You couple that with the $1.1 trillion that's already been done, and you're at $3.7 trillion. And look, is it perfect? No. Is it everything we'd hoped for? No. Does it match um, what Bull Simpson did? No. On, a, on an even comparison, Bull Simpson would be $5.3 trillion. You're, you're, all right, you're but a little at in the least weeds. Let me, ask you one, let me ask you one last quick question. Are you saying that you're, you don't like the president's plan? Uh, look, it may come to that, but I would hope that we would have one last attempt here to do what everyone knows needs to be done, which is a larger plan that really does stabilize the debt and get us moving in the right direction and does it in a way that is cognizant that we have uh, an economy that's recovering that still is weak and we don't slam it. We don't slam on the brakes here in a way that puts us back into recession. Uh, that let increases me, jobless rate to 9.1 percent. Let me bring in Senator Barrasso. Your reaction to Senator Conrad's plan? I want to find a solution. I want us to not go over the cliff because I think if we do, it hurts our economy and it hurts our country. Uh, when I listen to the president, I think the president is eager to go over the cliff for political purposes. I think he sees a political victory at the bottom of the cliff. He gets all this additional tax revenue for new programs. He gets to cut uh, the military, which Democrats have been calling for for years. Uh, and he gets to blame Republicans for it. And when the president recently, and it was in the Wall Street Journal yesterday, talked about uh, you know, using the State of the Union and using his inaugural address to blame Republicans, that doesn't sound like somebody who's working with Republicans to find a solution. It's time for the president to lead. Well, all right. You heard the president's plan, and he, he basically said, this is what I, all I think we can get done in these next nine days. Uh, extend uh, the Bush tax cuts for everybody below 250000 and extend unemployment benefits. As the number three Republican in the Senate, can you guarantee that Republicans won't filibuster that plan? I can't even guarantee that the Democrats will vote for it. You have many Democrats on the record who don't like this either uh, in the Senate. 
Uh, the 250 number is too low, according to a number of the Democrats. It doesn't deal with so many of the issues out there. So I'm not sure that they even get a majority in the Senate, even though the Democrats do have a majority of the members of the Senate and, right and now. And what about Republicans? Would you filibuster it? Uh, that's a different issue. I just don't think this is going to solve the problems. In the, it actually doesn't solve the problem. We have a spending problem in this country, Chris. We don't have a taxing problem. Well, the I, president I, I, is fixing. I understand on that, but I mean, that's, we've had this. You know, we've been had that argument seven days before. Of government. All right, we got nine days. Are we going over the cliff? Yeah. I believe we are, and I believe the president is eager to go over the cliff for political purposes. He senses a victory at the bottom of the cliff. I think it hurts our country and hurts our economy. All right, Senator Barrasso, I understand that your party opposes raising taxes, and I'm not. Even say whether you're right or wrong or that, that's, that's something that your party believes. But whether you like it or not, the Bush tax cuts expire for everyone on the, at the first of the year. Why not extend the Bush tax cuts for 98% of people instead of raising them for everybody? I, I don't want us to go over the cliff. I want to find a solution. The extension and making permanent the Bush tax cuts for everyone, I think would be a good idea. They have that bill that came over from the but House. That's not the, Senate can, we, the Senate can bring, Harry Reid can bring it up. Amendments can be offered. Uh, so I think there is still time. We're coming back here on the 27th. Uh, but, but realistically, what the president has just proposed is raising taxes now, perhaps dealing with spending later. We need to grow the economy. We need entitlement reform. The president seems to be ignoring those things, Chris. All right, Senator uh, Conrad, let, let, let's talk about the president's offer. Not the Conrad offer, but the president's offer. You were a member of the Bowles simpson Deficit Commission, and you voted for their final report. Let's remind people, that proposed almost $3 trillion in spending cuts. President Obama's last offer, the one that the Republicans rejected, was less than <clears throat> $1 trillion in spending cuts. We, we checked, that would be less than 2% of the $44 trillion the government will spend over the next decade. Again, is that the best Democrats can do, 2% of all the spending over the next decade? You know, this, is, this conversation to me is exactly what's wrong in Washington. Uh, I mean, just, just listen to the conversation you, you, you've just had. It's he, sh he said, she said, blame the other guy. Um, look, I tried to be constructive here and lay out an actual plan to get us nearly $4 trillion by taking the offers that are on the table. Uh, Speaker Boehner and the president were so close and then Speaker Boehner went off on Plan B. I don't, I've never understood why. He had no prospect of succeeding. It did not succeed even in his own caucus. But now but, the but question sir, you're not answering us, my, we only you're, have... You're not answering we, my question, which yeah, is... Yeah, because I'll tell you something, because we only have nine days left here. When are we going to get serious about actual solutions? I, I would welcome John to tell me. He says he wants a solution. Give us one. Give us one, John. There is only one person that can provide the leadership, and that's the President of the United States. No, no sir, there is that only is not one true. person no, that can no, there provide the leadership. He is rather, no. rather than campaigning, he ought to be no. here leading, no. working with people, and talking to folks on both sides of the aisle to get a solution so we don't go over the cliff. I believe no, the President's eager to go over the cliff. I, I, I don't believe that at all. There are 535 of us that can provide leadership. There are, five, there are 435 in the House, there are 100 in the Senate, there's the President. All of us have a responsibility here. And General you know what's happening? What's happening is the same old tired blame game. He said, she said, I think the American people are tired of it. What they want to hear is what is a solution? What is a way to stop this before we go over the cliff, put the economy back into recession, put millions more people out of work, Look, both sides are going to have to give some ground. All right, gentlemen. And we ought, to, we ought to hear from Republicans what ground they're willing to give. I've outlined what ground this Democrat is willing to give and have demonstrated it with Bull Simpson and the All group right. of six. Uh, Sen we Senator can Conrad, do this. I, I, want to move, I want to move on to another subject. We've got limited time, and I, I think we've exhausted this, <laughs> this debate uh, for the purposes of, the, uh, of this program. Uh, a, a week after the massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary, uh, NRA uh, uh, executive Wayne LaPierre joined the debate. Here's part of what he said. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Senator Barrasso, uh, Wayne LaPierre proposed having an armed guard in every school in America. Uh, estimates are that would cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $8 billion a year. A couple of questions. One, 
Would you vote We're at a time of, 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 of deficit issues for $8 billion a year to put armed guards in every school in America? And are there any laws you could support in terms of assault guns, uh, 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 assault rifles, in terms of high capacity magazines, tightening background checks, any new gun controls you could support? Well, let's step back for a second. I'm, I'm a doctor, I'm a father of three, uh, and I'm from Wyoming, a state where we belong, believe strongly in our Second Amendment rights. We are, the people of Wyoming, and me personally, are still absolutely committed to find real solutions that work. So something like this tragedy never happens again. Three more of those children were laid to rest yesterday. But I'm asking uh, a specific question, very, sir. very, 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 very hurtful to all of us in this country. I think decisions about uh, schools ought to be made at the local level. Uh, I would not want a national effort to say you have to do this at schools. I think local education decisions are best made at the local level. You know we're going to have a, a, a very spirited discussion in Congress in the beginning of next year. We need to look at all of the issues because what Wayne LaPierre and what the President of the United States agree on is that in this country we have a culture of violence. No, but I don't disagree. think Washington... That, 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 that's really... I think it, there is a cult, well, there's a culture of violence. I, I, there's and we also, need they also, the president believes, I'm not saying he's right or wrong, yeah. but the president believes that there is a need for tighter gun control. Would you support it or not? Yeah. Um, I'm a strong supporter of our Second Amendment rights. I want to find real solutions. I want to find real solutions that work. And Washington is not necessarily the place that you're going to find those solutions. They're going to be found in our families, in our faith, in our communities, and in medicine and in health care. Those are the problems. Senator Conrad, what did you think of what Wayne LaPierre had to say? And are there any gun controls that you would support? Well, I already have. I, I voted for an assault weapons ban twice. I voted for um, the closing the gun uh, gun show loophole where 40% of the guns are sold in this country and there's no background check occurring in those sales. I mean, maybe you can catch uh, people who shouldn't have their hands on a gun if you close the gun show loophole. I also voted for um, a, a lock to be sold with guns so that you have a trigger lock. Five dollars, you can have a trigger lock. That actually might have prevented this if um, the mother had had trigger locks on those guns. And we got she about a minute. We got about a minute left, uh, Senator Conrad. What, do you, what did you think this. of Wayne LaPierre's uh, offer I, I mean, into the debate? Uh, uh, and it's pretty empty, isn't it? I mean, that's the only answer is to put more guns in schools. Um, look, we already have armed officers in many schools in Washington D.C. We have armed officers in schools, and some of that uh, is appropriate and. Perhaps we can do more. It actually doesn't cost $8 billion. We have 130,000 elementary and secondary schools in this country. If you had two officers in each, that would cost $25 billion. Where is that money going to come from? I'll give, you, I'll give you 30 seconds to respond, Senator Barrasso. We're going to have to wrap this up. Well, it, it is the Christmas season. Washington doesn't have the answers for everything for our culture. Uh, there are issues of mental health, there are issues of our culture, uh, and I think that we're not, we, we can look and get some false sense of security from Washington in passing more laws, but we need real solutions to a significant problem in our country, and I'm not sure that passing another law in Washington is going to actually find a real solution. Senator Barrasso, Senator Codrod, we want to thank you both. Thanks for coming in today, and Merry Christmas to both of you. Thank you. You too.